Okay, in this video we're going to look at the impact that globalization has on a range of factors from living standards to economic growth to the environment, the impact it can have on financial markets, uh, the economic stability of Australia, so look how stable Australia's growth is, as well as the impact that it can have on the government. So starting with the impact on Australia's living standards, globalization has helped to expand Australia's production faster than our population. So basically our total level of output or total level of production is growing at a faster rate than um, our population and therefore income per person or GDP per capita is going up. So from 1982 to 1992, for example, um, population growth was around 1.4% per year. Household income grew by around 2.6% per year. Sorry, incomes grew between 1982 and 1992 for around 1.4% per year. And in that period in there, they grew by around 2.6%. So that's had a massive impact on Australia's living standards. Not only does that increase income, therefore increase our purchasing power, but it also leads to greater taxation revenue for the government. So the government has been able to provide more opportunities, provide more welfare and community services because they've been able to collect more tax revenue and that taxation revenues come from the higher incomes. So even though globalisation does lead to some structural unemployment, it's particularly free trade and reducing tariffs and quotas and things like that, in the short term, the idea is that it can have beneficial impacts on our living standards in the long term. And the main reasons for that is that our export markets get access to global markets. And that allows us to sell more and generate more profits. So even though there's some short-term costs, the overall benefit is that there's benefits in the long term. The surge of e-commerce... So being able to buy things online and reduce tariffs have allowed for more consumer choice as well. So we've also been able to um, import for at a cheaper price from overseas. So not only has it led to increased opportunities for our exporters, it's also sort of given us access to cheaper imports. Um, in terms of foreign investment, because it allows for more foreign investment in Australian property, it has hurt some Australians because they've had to experience... Um, um, higher house prices, so it's hurt home buyers, but home owners have experienced increases in profits because the value of their houses have increased. So increasing house prices have hurt people looking to purchase property, and that's come about through a lot of more international investment, um, foreign investment, particularly from the Asian market, but it has increased the wealth of home owners. In terms of Australia's economic growth, um, there's been a range of sort of positives and negatives. So growth, we're looking at the overall production and overall income earned by Australian citizens. In terms of the benefits, lower tariffs have forced Australians to allocate resources to areas of comparative advantage. Um, and that means areas essentially where we have lower opportunity costs. That's helped to boost efficiency and increase labour productivity. So essentially that's meant that we've generated more output from any existing level of inputs. So more output per hour, for example, of labour. This has also led to increased export sales. So one of the key benefits from our growth is the increase in exports, and that's because there's lower tariffs on our Australian local goods. So export production in Australia has increased from around 14% to 20% of our GDP. And basically that comes about because when we sign free trade agreements, um, other countries get access to our product without having to pay a tax to their government, and that boosts the demand for Australian goods and services. So they're cheaper for, it's also cheaper for Australia to import new equipment, so we can use that to boost our efficiency. Protection of businesses in the past have um, discouraged efficiency and made us not work as hard. So now that relaxation, rela relaxation of um, barriers to trade and increased competition has increased efficiency within Australia. So in terms of the benefits for growth, one, we become um, specialised in areas of comparative advantage which boosts efficiency. Two, and this is a key one, that the lower tariffs on our goods mean that we get access to overseas markets. So we make a lot more money and sell a lot of beef and sell a lot more minerals and sell a lot in more service areas where we have comparative advantage. It gives us access to cheaper equipment from overseas and that's been used to boost efficiency um, within our markets. It's also made us more efficient because we're no longer protected from other industries. The, encourage, the increase in foreign investment has also helped to boost our productive capacity. So what we mean by this one, this one's a little bit different. Basically, we've been able to get access to foreign investment. So foreigners have invested in Australian companies. They've provided um, increased money towards Australian companies, which allows Australian companies to expand and invest in new capital and machinery and technology. And that allows us to boost more our productive capacity because we're able to produce more because we have access to those resources and that money, that financial capital. It's also put pressure on the government to lower taxes, which has been good for boosting growth as well. In terms of weaknesses for growth, 
Um, it can be less sustainable. So what happens is that it can lead to increased instability. So if there's a severe downturn, for example, in Japan or the US, some of our major trading partners, um, we're more susceptible to that. And the reasons for that is that we often um, export less when other countries are growing poorly. It often leads, because a lot of Australians invest in financial companies, when other countries grow poorly, it often leads to Australians losing a lot of money on the share market. Um, and that leads to weaknesses as well. So it has led to something like a GFC or a global financial crisis reduces demand for our exports. It leads to job losses. It can lead to shareholders losing lots of money, particularly those with lots of superannuation, and that can slow growth in Australia. So some local firms have gone bankrupt and have to relocate overseas as well because they can't compete with overseas companies. Increased unemployment has reduced incomes. That's reduced spending and also reduced growth. So summarising the weaknesses for growth, um, it can make us less sustainable because we're more susceptible to problems in other countries. That can lead to reduced exports when other countries are growing poorly. It can lead to job losses. can lead to shareholders losing money that have invested in foreign companies. Um, it can also lead to a lot of Australian businesses moving overseas, and that can lead to um, bankruptcies in Australia as well. Increased unemployment and therefore decreased incomes for Australians. I'll talk about the impact on the environment in the next video.